right. Here we go again. Let's see if everything is working correctly. I don't want to see myself. Well, I am here again. I'm muted. Okay, that's good. I think I won't look at the chat here, I'll look at it from here better, if I can find it at least. Last time it just showed, but now I can't find it. I might need to look here then. Now I can't find it here either. Where did it go? Uh, let me refresh this. Where did the chat go? Uh, I player. see what's up but with that I can get started so let me go to pulumi.net which is not where I was working last time I was working on pulumi.cogen.net yes that's the project so going off from where we stopped last time was when we were working on the pulumi schema with the types and the parser so uh, last time we were able to come up with a parse, parse schema function that takes a JSON as input, which is the Pulumi schema, and gives you a schema back. And uh, now I've gone off and implemented, I think about 90% of the schema with everything it has. So if you look at it, it has now resources, it has functions, it has types, some extra things that are specific to how a uh, Bloomy schema should generate .NET packages. So that's inside the .NET package info, which is like how the namespace map, which package references should be added to the project when it generates the SDK, which project references, root namespace, etc. etc. We also have functions for function invokes and resources and to be honest, I'm quite happy with this because it can now. Uh, I have I've made the, the test program actually using unit tests, and it's able to parse these huge schemas. We have the random schema that we started off with, uh, but I also added Azure Native schemas, ASWX, which is like extensions on top of AWS provider, which is this one. And uh, yeah, those are being parsed correctly. I'm not going to assert all the things that are parsed are actually correct. I'll just assume that is the case because I think I'll do that later with smaller schemas. I just wanted to see if I use these bigger schemas, do they actually parse without an error? And that's the case because I can just .NET run and it will uh, run the parser logic on these things. And by the way, these things are huge, like I think about 30 megabytes, the Azure native one and the AWS native one, huge schemas. Sometimes the debugger wasn't even able to, uh, to show me that I couldn't like click through the contents of them, but the they look good, they look good. So this is kind of the first part of porting Lumi Cogen to .NET, which is being able to actually parse a schema. There is, uh, parsing the schema has a bunch of things like being able to get the resources, function invokes, types, provider, provider logic, which is itself a resource. So I think I've done those. 
and let's see how that looks here. Uh, it should put a check mark, right? No, it doesn't give me a check mark. Okay, maybe it's just the the view here. But anyways, like these things are done. What we could do is actually schema loading and schema loading will actually take a binary which is the provider and extract the schema from it uh, but that's a bit more complicated i'll get to that later when we actually need to first get to that later so this is not done yet uh schema load schema parsing i'll consider it done for now but schema loading is not we'll get to that later client sdk generation for c sharp is also not done which is where we generate a package that that is able to talk to the bloomy cli and actually make new resources in fact I, I won't be doing this now because i want to work on something a lot more interesting for me which is the program gen technology we have so program gen is the idea that we take a bloomy program in a source language like yaml or terraform or azure arm templates uh, azure templates azure arm and they all can be converted to an, one of our supported Lumi language like .NET, typescript java python go etc etc and the way we do it is where we convert them to an intermediate language that's pcl Lumi configuration language and then from PCL we generate a target language. So PCL is the is the common denominator when it works when it comes to program gen. And I'll show you in a bit how that works. So I think I've been working on that here. Uh, let me delete this. I'll come to this in a second. So for example, so show you what program gen does if you haven't seen this before. Take this simple YAML program in Pulumi. We support YAML since May this year, and it's a really nice way for people uh, for people to get started with Pulumi without having to know any language and without having to install any runtime, which is very important because this is this deletes all entry barriers. You don't have to install anything besides the Pulumi CLI, and you then you're able to uh, deploy your programs with. YAML programs. So this YAML program has resources that it defines. It defines a bucket, an S3 bucket, uh, with its content index HTML, um, and then it defines the index HTML file with this static string asset content. Um, there's a bunch of things going on here. We have resource definitions, we have properties, and we have function calls like this one and we also have outputs so once Bloomy has deployed the program it gives you something back which is the outputs of the program like the return type of the program and these outputs can be used from other programs or other or other like basically anything it can be used in another Bloomy program but could be used for anything else it doesn't matter and for our case so given this yaml program we can actually let me clear this up we can actually run i have bloomy version I think yeah this is not the latest but that's okay uh, we'll upgrade later but basically we can say bloomy convert this program into c sharp and put that in the c sharp directory So this is using our program gen tech written in Go, which does a whole lot of things. Uh, sometimes it's not the best because uh, now it thinks I'm using ASX here. Could not, uh, could not get provider. Could not find plugin. Okay. Uh, That is interesting. 
Well, that's a problem that may be solved by upgrading Volumi because I know we had a problem with provider mappers, just specifics. Um, let's go brew, upgrade Volumi. I was first testing with my local Volumi, Volumi build, which doesn't have that issue, but now that I'm using just the normal CLI, I get some issues. Yeah, sure, we can turn the music down a bit. No problem. There we go. It's all good, let me know. Okay, upgraded Volumi, so... Volumi version, that's right, that's the latest. This is going to be the last version we use for this year. And let's do our convert again. Yes, so it converted to C-sharp. It gives me a whole project. Sometimes it doesn't work. So this is the program that it generated. Which is very interesting it didn't, that it didn't work. Because in this case, it should be bucket ID. Yeah, I know YAML can handle this because bucket property here is, I think, either is a union of either the bucket ID or the bucket itself. This is interesting. This should have been fixed in YAML, I think. Anyways, um, this is an example of what the, what the technology does. It given a program, it tried another program. In this case, this, this clean F sharp, the C sharp program. So I want to rebuild that in F sharp using first the schema and using our intermediate PCL language. In fact, we can see what PCL it used to like to generate the YAML uh, from. I mean, we first go from YAML to PCL, PCL to C sharp. So let's see what PCL uh, comes out. So the language is PCL. I'm going to put that in PCL, but this doesn't work always because we have hidden it behind Volumi Dev, um, a Volumi Dev environment variable, which is so that we usually use this for debugging. And in this case, just to show an example, so I'm just going to go like that. And here we go. I can see that the intermediate PCL program that was generated is this. So this is how it looks like. This is what we work from. This is like the beginning, what we work from. And the, the parser in Volumi, the parser takes this PCL, converts it into a untyped AST plus bits here and there of the, of the schema types. And we take it from there and we generate C sharp or TypeScript or Go or Python or Java. In fact, even YAML, uh, it, YAML spits it out, but it can also take YAML, take PCL and convert it to YAML itself. Like you can do a, a whole round trip there. Um, but as we can see, uh, as we can see, it looks good here. So we have resource definitions, the names of the resources, their type tokens, which is important because uh, we will use this, we will use this type token to find it in the schema, right? Because the schema, if we looked at if we look at it from the code gen, we go to AWS, we see that things have type tokens like this. I think I can find the S3 bucket. So it was AWS S3 slash bucket. If I can write it. Bucket. There we go. So this is the type this is the definition. This is the, the properties, the 
description, which is usually the reason why these schemas are so huge, because these descriptions have examples in all the languages. Let's get rid of that. I think even, yeah, there's like 50 kilobytes worth of description just for this one resource. And here it has, and here it has some, some properties that like it's also interesting to see here, for example, we have the bucket property, which is what we were using here in the test. We have the bucket property, except that when we generated C sharp, it's now called, well, it should be bucket name. It didn't have a bucket name. Because now I see the schema. That bucket should be bucket name. Well, in this case, I think the the property name is just not re respected in this in this one, or maybe it's using a different maybe it's using a different schema. Uh, but we will figure that out later. It doesn't matter. It matters that we are able to get RPCL and we are able to parse a schema. So next next step is to parse the PCL. Parse this this piece of code. And to be honest, I could like roll up my sleeves and um, install fparsec and start writing parser combinators to, to be able to parse this whole thing and and do everything we can from here. However, I thought it would be much, much easier since we already have a parser in Go either. First, I thought of embedding the Go parser in .NET, um, but that was, that had like a very cross platform, like very platform specific issues. And I didn't want to uh, want to work on a, on a lower level of managing unmanaged of implementing a wrapper around unmanaged Go code. So instead I thought, okay, I'll use the parser to create a JSON tree of the syntax representation of this, of this PCL program. So instead of generating just program dot uh, PCL file, a PP file, we create something that generates JSON instead, which has uh, which has the structure of the code, the syntactic structure of the code, not the types yet, not the schema types yet. Like the typing, we will add later ourselves, but I just wanted this program to be converted into JSON. And then from the uh, Bloomy.net code gen, we will be parsing that JSON and create our AST again. Um, so that's, I think the easiest way to go about it and to do that, I actually have to actually roll up my sleeves and, and write some Go code, <laughs> um, which we do in Pulumi because it's written in Go. So if I go to Pulumi, I've already started working on it. In fact, I've actually made a target language that is JSON and I've hidden it behind an experimental or dev Maybe I should add both of them because I don't know if this is something that will actually land in the in the main CLI, but I'm I'm just working against my um, just working against my local dev build. So if it's Bloomy experimental or it's Bloomy dev, uh, then the JSON gen then the project generator will be the JSON generator, and if we look at that, the JSON generator will take a PCL program transforms it into JSON and just outputs it as a file, a file called program JSON in the resulting directory. And the way I do that is by going through each uh, PCL node. So let's talk a bit about PCL. PCL program has uh, a bunch of things. So a top level program has a list of nodes has the original files that it used to, to parse, but we don't we don't worry about that. But a program has a bunch of nodes, and each node can be either a resource definition, 
have output variable, local variable, and config variable. And when it comes to a resource definition, it has things like attributes, in inputs, which I've called attributes, I think, here. And each attribute has a name and a value. The value is an expression, which can be anything. So here we have written a function called transform expression, which transforms any expression into its equivalent base and shape. So for example, if we have a literal value expression that becomes a JSON object with type literal value expression and the value, we have a template expression, type template expression, and some parts. We have index expression, etc. etc. I can go on a lot, but basically I've started to implement this to uh, map the shapes it maps the syntax shape of the PCL from Go into JSON, and then I'll take that from F sharp and parse it into a nice discriminated union. Uh, I didn't handle all function calls. I just handled just enough calls, just enough expressions that is that I'm able to get something. But I, of course, I can add more as I go. So let's see. Uh, yeah, when I don't know anything, when I don't, when I haven't handled a case, it will just return nil. So I'll probably get that. Uh, so with that, let me build Plumi locally with make install, which will build it inside of dot Plumi dev slash bin. Go to my uh, test PCL and then do the thing again. So now not Plumi dev, I need Plumi experimental as one. And then do not use the, the global Plumi that was installed with brew. I will use my local one. So it was in home Plumi dev bin Plumi. Use convert as my target language being JSON. And I'm going to output that inside of a directory called JSON. And what do you know, you get a, you get a nice JSON file. And it, it's a bit big because it's using a lot of nested things. But that doesn't matter. Because for example, here we have nodes, that will be the top level, uh, the top level uh, property which has a bunch of things so the first node is type resource we know the name of the node my bucket the token it's using to map it to and we will use that token to look at to look that to look up the resource from the schema there's also a logical name uh, we could use either I think I'll use name because uh, it already handles like removing this part into a nicer, nicer shape. So I have my nodes, I have attributes that is like the inputs of the, of the resource. It's called website, which itself is an object response expression with, with a property index. So I'll need to like use this, uh, use this and generate an, an F sharp AST out of it. So that's the idea so far. We also have things like a function call expression with this function name and the arguments is an array of arguments, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the nice thing about having Pulumi generate this code is that it also automatically automatically uh, installs any required Pulumi packages. So the, the provider that it's using, like if if Pulumi starts from this. It doesn't know anything about which packages it should use, but it looks them up using these type tokens and it sees, oh, I need actually AWS. Do I have AWS on this local machine in my plugins directory? If I have, then it looks up the version, it looks up the schema. That's the, that's the work of the schema loading. It it knows that when it needs AWS, it will, it will look up a local, pro, a local provider here on my machine looks uh, looks up its schema and uses that to 
to bind and type check the uh, type check the Pulumi program and then generate um, in this case JSON from it where we are actually not using any of the typing information but I think I will need uh, packages here to do my own schema loading I'll, I'll try to implement schema loading myself and see what I what I can do from that so part of the PCL program will also be the packages used. I think I could look that up in home.volumi. I can just ls things here. Volumi plugins. Oh, there you go. So these are my local Lumi plugins, for example, I have a bunch of AWS, a bunch of versions because I keep installing new ones. And in this case, it looked up this one. It looked up this one and figured out what the resource, what the schema of this provider is. I think we also have a way to get the schema as JSON from these from these plugins, which I think is Lumi package. A get schema from from Volumi plugins resource AWS v5.18 v5.18 zero and I get JSON from that which I am going to write out into AWS JSON file. Oh, it says it's not an executable. Or is AWS not an executable? Hmm. I'm not sure why that's not working these are like basically debugging tools we have in in uh, gloomy anyhow um, yeah I was hoping that I could use this this uh, command to also do to also extract the JSON schema from a plugin of which I have the name of the and and the version these two and actually be able to uh, to call it plugin at path is not executable maybe because I need to sudo it no it's not working it's unfortunate But that's okay, that's not what we're going to do today. Uh, again, we'll try to read this and uh, we'll try to read this and see what I can do from it. What I can do from here. All right, going back to pulumicogen.net, we have our parser, pulumi schema, we have our tests. Uh, this is definitely not done yet. Let's add a new project. What is it called? Bloomy configuration language, which is uh, the abbreviation for uh, PCL. Bloomy configuration language. CD Bloomy configuration configuration language. Uh, let's make a class library. Okay, Pulumi configuration language. As a library, all that module types. Let's 
let's have a program which has nodes. Which has a node list. Of course, it doesn't know yet what node is, so let's implement that. Node is either a resource. Output variable, local variable, and finally a config variable. A resource will have a bunch of things. resource definition should be if I go back here to Pulumi we know that it has a name has a logical name it has a token which is a string and finally it has inputs and that's where it gets fun inputs is a map of string and expression ECL expression how do we model that here again I would like to call that syntax syntax expression to make it absolutely clear that we are talking about a syntax tree and not the typed tree. So it's a map of string and syntax expressions. Syntax expression could be, well, it's one of these things that we had in Pulumi. So if you look at the transform expression function, we have a literal value expression. So literal value expression goes into cogen. We have literal value expression of value, which is let's start with string. I'll change that later. Also have let's see. Easier maybe if I look at the JSON. No, it's Lumi. Literal value expression. The values can be here either a boolean, a number. Uh, or null uh, or string or null so literal value expression we have a template expression with parts where each part is a where each part is actually a expression itself okay let's do that type syntax value is either a boolean of bool string of string number of load I don't need array actually I just null required qualified access for all of these things Yes, nicer. Same here for node. So literal value expression of syntax value. Next one is a template expression of parts where each part is itself. Template expression of a bunch of values. Let's see, Plumi. We have template expression, literal expression, index, object cons is is nice. Object cons expression. No, I shouldn't do that. Object cons expression of properties, which is indeed a list of string and index expression 
so this is main, so this is values, constants. This is template, which is like for string interpolation. Objects is for object. Let's see what else. I think a tuple cons expression. Yeah, that's the next one. Uh, Mikogen tuple cons expression of items. Thank you. Uh, and now I want also a function call expression. Both name and arcs. Oh. That's a nice. That's a nice work with that. I think it might be nicer if these things are in their own respective records. Because if I want something that takes the object and its type, I don't want it to I don't want to give it the syntax object as a syntax expression, but I just want this part. I mean like this. So type object cons expression has properties so if I pass these things around it's understood what what the what they are same here tuple cons expression and function call expression Now this should not compile yet because this is not the recursive module now it is. The resource of resource output variable of output variable. We need we need uh, type checking when you have copilot making this up for you. But it's not doing that right now well it's not doing it so output variable has a name logical name logical name and expression and value i think so output variable type local variable name and value it and finally config variable i think it even has config type not sure we see these are the expressions source has type token logical name and attributes let's rename that into inputs so that it's one-to-one -one with the way we're doing it here because ACL has its corresponding schema this is something that the binder does it adds the resource schema into the when we're generating which is nice but it doesn't do that for nested objects which I want to do uh, later so inputs is an array of attributes that's good so inputs will be here that's good Local variable has type, name, logical name. Ah, config has also config type. Okay, config type is a string. Yes, that's okay. Uh, config type is a string. This is a program and now we need to write the parts. No, not what I want it. These are the types. Types. And I'll add the parser.
probably should add later a typed program where each node actually is typed. So a typed node will be a resource times it's it's type basically. So type type will be the types that is from the from the Pulumi configuration from this Pulumi schema project. But we can do that later. Let's let's write the parser here. This is the resource. Object cons items. I'll start I'll start with these and add the rest later. This is the parser. Yeah, I think I will have PCL depend on Bulumi schema. Yeah, let's do that. Let's add a reference to Bulumi schema, which means that See if it compiles. It actually compiles. I'm surprised, uh, but I, but it's not working yet. Let's also add it to the solution. So .net sln add the Bloom configuration language, and finally let's add it to the tests. So cd. I won't have a tests project. Per, per library, we'll just have one test, one test project. So tests. .net add reference to Lumi configuration language. Which means that my tests. So now it knows that the parser is from the schema. That's fine. Yeah, let's write the parser. Let's reload it so that it knows what I'm doing. Open Newton soft JSON and corresponding link. Parse program will take JSON. And it runs a program. We open the types module. So why it's not working here? It can build. Start that. Hmm. Yeah, I would like to write code with actual intelligence. it rider to the rescue looks like it figured out that I have had a new thing here oh it's because I didn't add parser to the project definition yeah that makes sense yeah now now it knows it's my fault Open types should work. Types is not defined. What do you mean? How did I add it here? Yeah, I did the same thing. Types. That's right. 
There we go. Okay. Start parsing. JSON is parse the input JSON. Notes. Let's see. Notes is a list of if program JSON actually contains notes and from JSON notes dot type is J token type of an array. Now I can do things with it. Notes JSON is this thing. Just cast it. And then for node in notes JSON. I can do it much nicer, I think. So this is a sequence filter all nodes where the node is actually an object. Thank you. And then Pass them all to object. And now let's start mapping them. Parse node will take JSON, which is a J object, and returns a node. So for each of those, parse the node. And that's our parse program. So now I need to parse nodes individually, which means I also need to parse resource from JSON J object into resource. That's more like it. What if I added actually node option so that this is some resource node? resource otherwise otherwise it's none except that I don't want to map them here I want to collect does it collect it was choose yeah Choose was the way. Sequence the list. Don't need to do that here. So this is this was wrong again by Copilot. If it contains type, if it contains type and JSON and string type. And a type is actually string, then we match resource. Output to do none. 
resource. Not variable. Local variable. And finally, uh, config variable. Anything else is is also none, but that shouldn't really happen because you only have these four types. As to parse resource, I think I'm only gonna need these two: parse resource and parse output. Resource have yeah inputs except inputs is actually an array so inputs array is this as an array no it's actually an object never mind Object, J object. Input object. Totally map of list. property in the object close enough property name and a property value which is a j token uh, will assume that each value each expression is an object okay if value is j object property value property value is and then parse expression finally and now we need to parse expressions knows that I want a syntax expression, that's good. 
needs to say do the same thing as with the type because they're all divided by types. Is it literal value expression? Which is a bit annoying that I need to also match on the types of an in the JSON. Also option okay. Let me do that uh, more functional way, which is inputs. Put object. Properties, property, first filter, where the value is actually object. Then map those. That's exactly what I want. Can you write it? So if my expression Yeah, if my expression was able to parse something, then give me the name of the expression. Finally. empty there we go that looks nicer now that parse expression takes object and returns option but it will have zero zero inputs Try to fix that. But this is the general shape of the parser. I think I'm good, thank you. the literal expression so when I have that value if I have a string you probably have a specialized function just for literal value expression but that's okay for now but 
if I have, then I have a string, then I have a syntax value of string that is coming from, I guess I could do it like this, value to object using the proper parser. becomes a syntax expression literal value expression of that value and some expression need to do that for a bunch of those things okay fine Specialized integer. I think I need that. Okay. There's no double, is it? A number and boolean and anything else. Anything else is none. Well, anything is, is actually none. The null expression syntax. Syntax value. Null and then expression will be that expression. Same expression. Yep. Yeah, definitely need its own own parse literal value expression I'm just trying to make it easier here That's actually nicer than what I wrote. There we go. Don't need to do defensive type checking. Literal value expression template expression is actually easier because I only need to parse the parts. OK. 
okay that's a template expression let's do a object cons expression which has properties basically starts to learn here a bit and tuple cons expression does that look good yep finally function call it function call expression That's all I need to do. Template expression. Actually, there are a lot, there are a lot more expressions here that I need to compile. Let's see. There is the scope traversal. There is. Did I already parse output variable? No. Let me do that then. Or let Copilot do that. output variable already using it here that's good okay moving on to actually test this so tests emails all test new folder call them programs json basic aws JSON that will be my program which I will take from here into Bloomy code gen put the put the generated one here except these are inputs now because I've changed them and yeah, maybe I should regenerate that because I installed called attributes why is it still called attributes I did change that to inputs no yeah resource inputs save install experimental convert to JSON yeah now inputs that's more like it and now I'm going to be changing these a bit every once in a while so I'll need to make a better way of testing the programs that they're actually up to date that's why I have programs JSON because I intend to also add programs ECL and then shell out to Pulumi to generate the JSON and then retrieve the JSON. But for now, retrieving it uh, like this is also fine. So let's add this is schema parsing. Let's add PCL tests. Or I could just add it next to schema parsing. That's okay. I'll just call it parsing. Test 
parsing a basic JSON program works. Program read all text from programs JSON and basic AWS. That's a program. Let's parse it. Except this is not the right parser. How do we make an alias module ECL? Oh, it's a namespace. Okay, I'll just I'll just do PCL. Parser schema. There are two nodes here. Why is it not working? That's the wrong full name. Oh, it's a type. Weird. just not up to date yeah it, it is part it is compiling so maybe because I added the file later a bit confused about it yeah now it knows so I should be able to alias it from here focused test so that we only run this one there are three nodes in the program yeah there are three actually um, that did not parse it, did not write it out.
let's see notes resource name logical name token inputs is a map of website which is an object cons expression which has properties again another map That's nice. So a template expression of a literal value expression. Yeah, I think this can be simplified because oh, I see it here because index document is just this. So it's a template expression with a single part. I think if it's a template expression with a single part, then we can just output that part. But I'm not sure if that's always valid. Yeah, it's the same here. I think I can do that. I can do that simply. Yeah, we even have a function call expression called string asset with arguments. Yes, more things. And somehow it didn't know how to write out the literal value expression. Like something with null, something with output variable is not good. We have a re one resource, uh, to a re two resources, and one output variable. That is close enough. Let me simplify the template expression first, all the way in Bloomy. So transform expression, if we have a template expression first, we have just one part. If it's just one, then return transform expression just one oh. mixing up the equal the equal and double equal so that should look actually much nicer much easier this is again in the bloomy local build Installing it again, installed, generate the program, which is in here. Hey, yeah, that's much nicer. That's a much simpler program. Now index document is a literal value expression with the value index. Now I need to update the program again. Yeah, that's a much nicer program. Much easier to work with. So here we have output variable with some parts with a template expression if it's a template expression why is it literal value expression because I also have scope travel traversal the function call looks good yeah it looks good why wasn't template the output variable value let's see 
So it's the parser here. Oh yeah, this is again relying too much on uh, on copilot. Value is just this. They just assume that value object. Assume that the value is J object and simply parse the expression. Ah, uh, it becomes an option parse expression. Maybe parse expression shouldn't return none, just for the for the ease of it. Return option. How about that? Now I just need to handle it here. Yes, that's more like it. So we have it, the output variable where the value is a tempered expression of a literal value expression of this string. Yes, that's correct. Uh, except that it's not taking the other part, which is, this is the first part. Second part is a, traver is a scope traversal expression. Let's add that. It has a root name and it has a, a traversal. Root name and traversal. That's a root name and traversal is a list. Traversal list. Traversal can be a traversal attribute. Let's see. Traversal is like when you have something dot something else. That's a scope traversal or it could be relative traversal. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's a relative traversal and a scope traversal, each of which can have traversal attribute, okay. Yeah, traversal is basically a list of these things. Either a traverse attribute or a traverse index. 
source attribute of name, which is a string, or index of an integer or, or number. But I don't think you index a 0 0.5 something, so. Yeah, that's more like it. of traversal but I'm not sure oh yeah there's also there's also a traversal splat something traverse splat as each also needs to be recursively implemented. This is definitely another traversal type. So traverse attribute, traverse index, and traverse splat. So traverse attribute. And traverse splat. Uh, actually, traversal list. Traversal in the PCL definition in Pulumi is just a list of those. So it's a list of traversal kind. I think the same is also with relative traversal expressions. Yeah, relative traversal expressions as a source and then a list of those. Okay. is itself also an expression yeah that makes sense relative traversal expression it has traversal it has source which is a syntax expression that's it and traversal okay
Root name is always a string. Okay, okay. okay let's learn how to actually uh, transform traversal. Object, generic dictionary. And we can do what we're doing here. Basically this. returns an array of those. Right? Recursively because I can't call the transform expression on its own. There's also a traverse root, okay, with a name. Okay, it gets it's more complicated. Lumi.net, no, not Lumi.net. Ogen.net. Traverse attributes. Reverse root of of name. In Blumi, so we have traverse root. In which case, name is part of name. Yep, that is a string, and we have. Traverse splat. And each will be the recursive call to transform reversal. Each. So this recursively makes a JSON out of a traversal which we can use in here. Where is it? Relative traversal expression will mean that we do not have to worry about this one again. That's easier. Same with the scope traversal. that makes more sense let's build it and use it okay back to generating the actual program Yeah, now it now I can see it. Now it actually has a traverse root. It 
this is the correct translation name here my bucket dot website endpoint yeah my bucket dot website endpoint is this Cogen, update this thing. This is all part of a template expression which has, has these things. Okay. Start parsing those. takes um, <clears throat> takes JSON J object and returns returns a reversal reversal kind. Returns a traversal kind list. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, that looks right. Well, actually, they, are, they were nicer than this. Attribute root index splat. Yeah, that's those are the types. And then there is the recursive call. I need to make it recursive? No, because the module itself is recursive. And I don't need optional text. expression reversal is array
does it have other than that? It has root name as well, okay. There we go. So that's scope traversal. We also have a relative traversal. And a relative scope traversal has See it from here, but I can see it in here. Type source and traversal. This one has type root name and traversal. the source might actually be an expression, I think. Yeah, source can be any expression when we're talking about a relative traversal expression. should be just parsing the expression from here. Mm, don't need to check those. We're not able to parse the source as an expression, we just bounce. Okay, making sure. No, oh, making sure I have the latest one. It's more like it. So the value of the output variable is a template expression where it's made out of these parts, literal value expression and a scope traversal expression, my bucket dot website endpoint. And I think with that, we're able to parse the entire program correctly. We have function calls. We have object cons expression somewhere. Yeah, we have it right here. We have inputs, resources and output variables. I would say that is a very good start to the parser. I'll keep working on the JSON part of these things here. Um, as you can see, it's it was much easier than having to do this by hand with, with fparsec, although possible, although better, that I don't want to depend on Pulumi, uh, but I think there's uh, no other way around it. Because eventually, eventually, the language support, when it's done in, in pure.net, it will have it will still have to talk to Pulumi. So if Pulumi can say, well, 
and want to convert that program, here's a JSON representation of it, and the .NET language support will be like, okay, I'll take it from here and do the rest. That's kind of my idea when it comes to the code gen, to the code gen support in .NET. Try to do as much as possible, but then depend a little bit on Pulumi for at least this thing. We already did the parsing of the schema, and now we have also a configuration language, the Pulumi configuration language parser for that. Although it's a simple language, it still can be pretty complicated. Um, and this is not, not even like the entire program, but still. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of a lot of work here. And then after this, taking an expression, a syntax expression and, and combining it with the type schema, that would be also interesting. But then we get a typed ECL program, which is pretty, pretty nice to work with when we're doing PCL to target language, in our case to C sharp. I don't think when we're doing .NET language support, we care about also targeting Python or targeting Go, even though it would be possible and even though it would be much nicer to use this instead of using Go. Because right now the typed PCL we work with in, in Pulumi is a, bit, is a bit weird. Sometimes we have the schema, sometimes we don't, and we make a lot of assumptions. Here we don't have to make assumptions. We know we are encoding the type information in a nice AST. And with that, I think I've uh, been streaming for quite a bit. I think I'll call it a day. I'll continue a bit at my own pace um, and see how far I can go from here. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.